What's up hobby friends, my name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today we're going to paint up a loon boss for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. When the Gloom Spide Gits came out a couple of years ago, there were some seriously awesome new models that came with the release. Much like orcs, these little green goblins carry with them a very unique and fun aesthetic. One of my favorite models in the line is the Loon Boss, and I happened to come across this particular model on eBay for sale at 15 bucks. Let's take a look at the model and see how we did for that price. First off, a new version on Sprue at the lowest price isn't much more than what I paid. 17 bucks to have total control over your build is a great price for an HQ unit. That generally averages $25. But they say that time is money, right? Let's get in a little closer and see if the time saved was worth the price. These Loon Boss models are notorious for a very large gap running down the middle of the helmet. It's really noticeable and very unappealing. So the question is, does this cheaper model that I bought have that gap or was the work done to fix that? Luckily for us, this model has had its mold lines removed and the gaps filled, which really makes this a great buy. Even better than one that's new on Sprue because there's been work done to improve this model. When you look at models on eBay, keep an eye out for models that are pre-built. Make sure to zoom in on pictures and check the quality of that build. Because more often than not, a built and partially painted model will be much easier to deal with than building a new one. Of course, you're almost as likely to get one that was built poorly, but that's just part of being diligent and going through all of the pictures before making a purchase. The point is, you need to take your personal time into account. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the hobby, your time is worth something and you should try and protect that as much as possible. Now all of that being said, you're probably thinking, sure, you might save time not having to clean and build the model, but now you have to strip it clean. Doesn't that mean you aren't saving anything? Not necessarily. I personally use a sonic cleaner to strip my minis, and that greatly reduces stripping time. Let's drop this model into the concentrated cleaner and run it for one cycle. This is set for 500 seconds, which is a little over eight and a half minutes. I'll turn on the time lapse and we can watch what happens. After that cycle, you can see that the paint has been completely taken off, which if I'm being honest, is pretty rare. The last owner took care of this model. It was started properly, the gaps were taken care of nicely, the primer was probably done with an airbrush, and the paint that was on the model was brushed on thin, so it all came off exactly how I wanted. We aren't always that lucky when buying models off of eBay, but even then I'd say I run models an average of 2.5 cycles to get 99% of the paint off. So stripping a model can still be quick and keep your hobby time safe. Now that the model is back to new, let's start by making sure everything is ready for primer. In this case, I'm gonna go over the areas where I know the gaps were located and cover them with a thin coat of plastic cement. This will ensure that the gaps are sealed and those plastic pieces are actually melted together properly and they stay shut. When you strip a model, we can sometimes take away more than we intended, like glues and gap fillers. So this is just a precaution before putting any paint on. 
Then I'll use super glue and CA activator to redo the sand on the base. Like I was saying about the sonic cleaner taking away glue, the PVA that was used for the sand has become gooey and started to come off. So scraping off the excess and replacing it with new sand will ensure a good bond to the base. For priming, I'll be using Badger Stino Res, starting with a really thin coat of black and working my way up to gray at a sideways angle, and finally white directly from the top. That way we have the zenithal prime done and the model has all of its light and shadows ready to go. Now for picking a direction for color, I've painted one of these models on this channel before, but that was a long time ago and things on this channel were a little different. Here's my original model. This is the direction that I've taken my personal gloom spite gets, and I'm gonna wanna do something a little bit different this time around. Also, look at that gap. That's just gnarly. No reason for that to be there. This model is really bright and fun, and I think I'll probably shoot for something a little more desaturated and dark fantasy. But let's take a quick look at Google and see if there are some other types of paint jobs that might help the decision making process. There are some really good looking loon bosses here. Weirdly though, they mostly look the same. A couple of small differences here and there, but generally the same color choices throughout. I do like this one that has a colored under armor in red. It contrasts nicely with the green skin without overdoing it and going full Christmas. So that's a cool idea that we can play off of. I also like this where the nose is a separate piece of armor. It does look like a separate piece on the model, so that's something that we can explore. Otherwise, I think we'll just play around with some color, and worst comes to worst, we can do some masking to make the most out of our airbrush. Since this model has been given a pretty stark zenithal, any color that we put over the top of that will desaturate quite a bit as it turns to black. I really want to keep this model in the Gloom Spite family. So the yellow helmet is a good place to start. I'll be using a Minotaur ghost tint for this, which works really well, but isn't as strong a yellow as something like an ink, or the unfairly discontinued Lamenter's yellow. Contrast yellow with a brush actually does a really good job, so that's a great alternative and one I could have explored. It's richer and gives that nice orange tint in the shadows that I'll have to manually put in later. No problem though, because the ghost tint still does a really good job. Next up, I'm going to fill in all of the metallics using a fairly bright metallic. I don't want to start off too bright because we'll have nowhere to go for highlights. On the other hand, I plan on covering up a majority of the metal with washes and rust. So we could have gone darker and tried working our way back up, or really bright and brought the color down. Either way is an acceptable option, but building up lighter colors over dark base coats takes way longer than the other way around. After that, I'm gonna come in with the airbrush and start to play around with the mushrooms. Remember, the goal is to go pretty dark, and in my excitement, I went pretty bright. Again, I'm just playing around at this point, practicing brush control and trying to keep it thin. I love doing this with models I'm unsure of because there's almost a surprise element to it all. You never really know where you're gonna end up. You can see that I've gone back and forth a little bit with color. The really interesting thing is, because I'm going pretty fast and laying down such thin layers with the airbrush, I'm actually opening myself up for a massive problem. If you introduce water to these paints before they're technically fully dry and cured, you run the risk of reactivating them and moving them around. Sometimes you want to do this on purpose to get that nice chipping effect, but for smooth mushrooms, probably not the best course of action. That being said, I lay down a wash over the nice purple, and what do you know, it starts to chip. At first I was thinking, you know, I would just reshoot it, but then I started to look at the color that was underneath and decided to just roll with it. Let's keep washing these mushrooms and see what ends up happening. Worst comes to worst, I'll just come back over it with an airbrush and cover it up again.
Since the pattern actually looks pretty good, I'm going to come in with a lighter pink to highlight those sections and try and make this look a little more purposeful. In the end, I really wasn't happy with the way that these mushrooms were looking. I was getting away from the goal I had in mind, so I decided to pivot and start laying down some rust color into the armor. That way, I could get an idea where the mushrooms would need to end up color-wise that would contrast nicely with the rust-colored armor. I spent some time going back and forth with different browns and oranges, filling in the armor, bringing some back in with the metallics, and ended up with a nice dirty suit of armor that put this model into kind of a darker piece of fantasy. The mushrooms changed accordingly to a bluish gray to contrast the orange rust and I finally felt like this model was in a good place. Before we get to the final reveal, I just want to clarify a few things. This video is a little bit of a change from how I normally make a painting tutorial. It might not seem too different, but on my end this was an easier, more approachable way of doing a weekly video. The reason for the change isn't a bad one, in fact it's really fantastic. It just so happens that my wife is pregnant with our second child and she is due in just a couple of months. I am very excited, but I'm also a little concerned as to how that will affect my ability to put out compelling content on a weekly basis. Now I don't plan on changing my upload schedule, if anything I'll be working harder to pre-do videos for when the baby gets here to take that load off. I've got some really fun, slightly easier projects in the works, as well as some really great models that will be going back on eBay. Speaking of which, this particular model will be making its way back on eBay, and as always, the price will start at the same price that I purchased the model for. If you would like to support this channel, the auctions are a great way to do it. I also have a Patreon with some fun rewards if that isn't your thing. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, the, the Loon Boss. <laughs>